The following is an EWTN special presentation. EWTN's Cathedrals Across America presents from St. Paul's Cathedral in Birmingham, Alabama. Holy Mass with ordinations to the priesthood.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My dear friends in Christ, I welcome all of you as I call today to Christ's holy priesthood three of our sons and brothers who are with us in this church called to Christ's priesthood. We ask the Lord's special blessing on the lives of service. They will now live for all of us as priests of God. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Gloria in excelsis Deo.
Let us pray. Lord our God, who in governing your people make use of the ministry of priest, granting a persevering obedience to your will, to these deacons of your church, whom you graciously choose today for the office of the priesthood, so that by their ministry and life they may gain glory for you in Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce of year of favor from our God and a day of vindication by our God to comfort those who mourn, to place on those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes, to give them oil of gladness in place of mourning, a glorious mantle instead of a listless spirit. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, I exhort the presbyters among you as a fellow presbyter and witness to the sufferings of Christ and one who has a share in the glory to be revealed. Tend the flock of God in your midst, overseeing it not by constraint, but willingly, as God would have it, not for shameful profit, but eagerly. Do not lord it over those assigned to you, but be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd is revealed, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at table with the apostles. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I shall not eat it again until there is fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, gave thanks and said, take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you that from this time on, I shall not drink of the fruit of the wine, vine, until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which will be given for you. Do this in memory of me. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which will be shed for you. Then an argument broke out among them about which of them should be regarded as the greatest. He said to them, the kings of the Gentile lord it over them, and those in authority over them are addressed as benefactors. But among you it shall not be so. Rather, let the greatest among you be as the youngest, and the leader as the servant. For who is greater? 
the one seated at table or the one who serves? It is not the one seated, is it not the one seated at table? I am among you as the one who serves. It is you who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer a kingdom on you, just as my Father has confirmed one on me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on the thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. John Paul, Mary Zeller of Divine Mercy. President. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the priesthood. You know them to be worthy. After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we choose these, our brothers, for the order of the priesthood. My dear friends, in Christ, today is a great day for the Diocese of Birmingham and Alabama as we call now to the priesthood of Jesus Christ these three men who have been up until now serving our church as transitional deacons, Charles Merrill, Brother John Paul Zeller, and Brother Pascal Yoey. As deacons, you were reminded of the importance of service as a central call for disciples of Jesus Christ. And today, you three men give your lives more fully to service of God and of your neighbor as you take on the ministerial and servant priesthood of Christ in the spirit of today's gospel. As Jesus was in our midst as one who serves, your priesthood today makes you in a fuller way a servant of the mercy and the sacramental mysteries of Jesus Christ for the rest of your lives. And those sacramental mysteries are represented in symbol in the apse of our uh, sanctuary uh, behind me, the principal sacrament that you will celebrate with me as a priest for the first time today is, of course, the Holy Eucharist, the greatest gift of Jesus Christ to his church and to the world, the summit and the source of our Christian life. There is no greater gift of power given to any human being 
than that of being the instrument of bringing the divine presence of Jesus Christ into our world in the Holy Eucharist. Only the Blessed Mother had such a great privilege that preceded and foreshadowed this great gift you are given today. And I join today my predecessor, Bishop David Foley, Abbot Cletus Mayer, Father Anthony Mary Stelton, who is the community servant of the Franciscan Missionaries of the Eternal Word, and my brother priest, and our deacons, in welcoming uh, you parents, family members, friends, and the wider Eternal Word television family to our ordination ceremony today. We thank you, our ordinands, for your courage in saying yes to the Lord's invitation to you that was born in your hearts by the work of the Holy Spirit and nurtured by that Spirit through the years, through your years of prayer and discernment and training. And we're grateful to your parents who have given you life and educated you in a life of faith. We thank the seminaries that trained you and the seminary formators that formed you to resemble the person of Jesus Christ, whose priesthood you will share and whose message you will witness with your words and with your life. The two patron saints of our Birmingham diocese whose images are in our cathedral sanctuary are excellent role models to you in the meaning and purpose of your priestly commitment. St. Paul, our principal patron, the priest and preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ to the Gentile nations, and St. John, St. John Vianney, the patron of priests, who once said that the priesthood is the love of the heart of Jesus. When you see the priest, think of our Lord Jesus Christ. With the grace of God, may the three of you aspire daily to the high ideals of priesthood set by our patrons, St. Paul and St. John Vianney. By your priestly life, and by your lifestyle of humble priestly service, you three men will lead many thousands of people close to God. And so may you follow that invitation of 1 Peter chapter 5 of today's second reading that reminded you that God's flock is in your midst. Give it a shepherd's care. Watch over it willingly as God would have you do, not under constraint, and not for shameful profit, but generously. Be examples to the flock, not lord it, lording it over them, so that when the chief shepherd appears, you will win for yourselves the unfading crown of glory. You know from your studies that historically, the church has been described in many ways. The words of Peter compares it to a shepherd's flock. Jesus is the chief shepherd, but you become a shepherd, a pastor as well. And that term has survived down through the ages for one who shepherds or pastors a community in the church. The church has also been described as the mystical body of Christ, as the people of God, as a communio or communion, and in a certain sense is a sacrament of the presence of Christ in our world. Our Holy Father, Pope Francis, has been giving catechesis on the mystery of the Church in his recent general audiences, and in one of his recent reflections, he refers, I think, beautifully to the Church as a family. What a great comparison this is. It, he's saying that the Church is not an organization born out of an agreement made by some people, but as Pope Benedict XVI had reminded us many times, it is God's work. It is born from the desire of God to call all people to communion with him, to his friendship, and indeed to participate as his sons of his own divine life. The very word church, the Pope reminds us, comes from that Greek word ekklesia, which means convocation. God summons us. He urges us to come out of our individualism out of our tendency to close in upon ourselves, and he calls us to be his family. This call, the Pope says, has its origin in creation itself. God created us to live in a deep friendship with him. 
And then when we read the Gospels, we see that Jesus gathers around him a small community that welcomes his word, follows him, shares his journey, becomes his family, and with this community, he prepares and he builds his church. So my dear brothers and my dear friends, because of Christ, not because of us, that church, that family is a holy church and a holy family. And you and I are called to be part of that family and to reflect the holiness of the holy family, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. We're called to enter into relationship with the holiness of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And your role as priest, my dear sons, and mine as well as bishop, is to help try to bridge the gap between the sinfulness of the human condition and the awesome holiness of God by bringing the mercy of Christ to all who stand in need of that mercy. And I think that encompasses all of us in this church today. In and through the family of God that is the church, and precisely in and through that special family. In and through that church, with its powerful seven sacraments and its breadth of ministries, you will be channels of the divine mercy of God to the world in which you live. And I pray today that God's immense peace and his manifold blessings be with you as you confidently take up that great ministry Jesus Christ calls you to today in his family that is the church. And finally, my dear sons, exercising for your part the office of Christ, head and shepherd, while united with the bishop and with your religious superiors and subject to them, strive to bring the faithful together into one family so that you may lead them to God the Father through Christ and in the Holy Spirit. Keep always before your eyes the example of the good shepherd who came not to be served, but to serve, and who came to seek out and save what was lost. My dear sons, before you enter the order of the priesthood, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. Do you resolve with the help of the Holy Spirit to discharge without fail the office of priesthood in the presbyteral rank as worthy fellow workers with the order of bishops in caring for the Lord's flock? I do. Do you resolve to exercise the ministry of the word worthily and wisely preaching the gospel and teaching the Catholic faith. I do. <clears throat> you resolve to celebrate faithfully and reverently in accord with the church's tradition, the mysteries of Christ, especially the sacrifice of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation for the glory of God and the sanctification of the Christian people. I do. You resolve to implore with us God's mercy upon the people entrusted to your care by observing the command to pray without ceasing. I do. And to resolve to be united more closely every day to Christ, the high priest, who offered himself for us to the Father as a pure sacrifice, and with him to consecrate yourselves to God for the salvation of all. I do with the help of God. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. <clears throat> do you promise respect and obedience to the diocesan bishop and to your legitimate superior? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment.
You promise respect and obedience to the diocesan bishop and to your legitimate superior? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will pour out abundantly the gifts of heaven on these his servants, whom he has chosen for the office of priest. Let us kneel.
by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Be merciful to us sinners. Govern and protect. the Pope and all the ordained in faithful service to your church. Lord, we hear our Bless these chosen men. Lord, we hear our Bless and sanctify these chosen men. Sanctify and consecrate these chosen men. Lord, we are Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, we are Form your clergy in faithful service. Lord, we are Comfort with your mercy the troubled and the afflicted. Lord, we Strengthen all of us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, we Jesus, Son of the living God. Lord, we Hear us, we beseech you, Lord our God, and pour out on these servants of yours the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the power of priestly grace, that those whom in the sight of your mercy we offer to be consecrated may be surrounded by your rich and unfailing gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Draw near, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, author of human dignity. It is you who apportion all graces. Through you, everything progresses. Through you, all things are made to stand firm. To form a priestly people, you appoint ministers of Christ, your Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit, arranging them in different orders. Already in the earlier covenant, offices arose, established through mystical rites. When you set Moses and Aaron over your people to govern and sanctify them, you chose men next in rank and dignity to accompany them and assist them in their task. So, too, in the desert, you implanted the spirit of Moses in the hearts of 70 wise men, and with their help, he ruled your people with greater ease. So also, upon the sons of Aaron, you poured an abundant share of their priestly plenty, that the number of, priests, of the priests prescribed by the law might be sufficient for the sacrifices of the tabernacle, which were a shadow of good things to come. But in these last days, Holy Father, you sent your Son into the world, Jesus, who is apostle and high priest of our confession. Through the Holy Spirit, he offered himself to you as a spotless victim, and he made his apostles consecrated in the truth, sharers in his mission. You provided them also with companions to proclaim and carry out the work of salvation through the whole world. And now we beseech you, Lord, in our weakness to grant us these helpers we need to exercise the priesthood that comes <clears throat> from the apostles. Grant, we pray, almighty God, to these, your servants, the dignity of the priesthood. Renew deep within them the spirit of holiness. May they henceforth, henceforth possess this office which comes from you, O God, and is next in rank to the office of bishop. And by the example of their manner of life, may they instill right conduct. May they be worthy co-workers with our order so that by their preaching and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, the words of the gospel may, may bear fruit in human hearts and reach even to the ends of the earth. Together with us, May they be faithful stewards of your mysteries so that your people may be renewed in the waters of rebirth and nourished from your altar, so that sinners may be reconciled and the sick raised up. May they be joined with us, Lord, in imploring your mercy for the people entrusted to their care and for all the world. And so <clears throat> may the full number of the nations gathered together in Christ, be transformed into your one people and made perfect in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. The Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. The Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God.
receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God, understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. <clears throat> Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross.
God, Father Charles, <laughs> Father Pastor, and Father John Paul.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. O God, who have willed that your priest should minister at the holy altar and serve your people, grant by the power of this sacrifice, we pray, that the labors of your servants may constantly please you, and in your church bear that fruit which lasts forever, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priest to the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the Paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments as they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters. They strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we to give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim.
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, my brother bishops, and all those who hold to the truth and hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, in paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God and our Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysoconus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for these, your servants, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of priesthood. And in your mercy, keep safe your gifts in them so that what they have received by divine commission, they may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion 
the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Amid us we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace 
I leave you my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. May the divine sacrifice we have offered and received, O Lord, give new life to your priest and to all your servants that united to you in unfailing love, they may receive the grace of giving worthy service to your majesty through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we ask for and receive uh, the first priestly blessing from our new priest, I just, on your behalf, I'd like to thank all those who had a part in today's blessed ceremony in any way, and a special way of Father Basil, the Master of Ceremonies and the Rector of our Cathedral, Bruce Ludwig, our uh, choir director, and all his many singers and, and cantors. Uh, we thank our wonderful servers, uh, our deacons. Uh, our servers happen to be our seminarians and uh, God willing future priests. Um, I thank uh, Bishop Foley, Abbot Cletus, and we thank in a special way Father Anthony, who is the head of the community, whose two members uh, were ordained with our own Father Charles. And we thank you for your contributions through EWTN uh, to sharing the message of the gospel and Holy Mass throughout our world each and every day. We're very grateful to all of you, my brother priests. Thank you again uh, for your witness to our younger uh, men uh, aspiring to the priesthood, being an example to them. And we thank our seminary representatives who are with us in a special way for your leadership and your mentoring of our three new priests. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who founded the church and guides her still, protect you constantly with his grace that you may faithfully discharge the duties of the priesthood. Amen. May he make you servants and witnesses in the world to divine charity and truth and faithful ministers of reconciliation. Amen. And may he make you true shepherds to provide the living bread and word of life to the faithful that they may continue to grow in the unity of the body of Christ. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God.